Um, like she previously said, I will be presenting today on the bioanalysis of canine tear lacrotin. Um, so what is lacrotin? Lacrotin is a glycoprotein formed and secreted in the tears that flows over the ocular surface. Um, it was discovered actually at UVA by Dr. Gordon Laurie and it's around 119 amino acids long. Um, it is known as a secretion enhancing factor because when it is topically applied to the ocular surface of rabbits, it's known to promote basal tearing and um, not only while being topically applied, but after application is ceased. Thus, we want to investigate lacrotin as a potential biomarker for dry eye disease. Dry eye syndrome um, occurs in both humans and canines. It is a chronic disease and therefore requires treatment throughout the patient's life. However, efficient treatments are not really out right now. Most treatments will only alleviate symptoms for a couple of hours. And so there is a big potential for um, a therapeutic that's more effective for treating dry eye syndrome. So my project was a preclinical trial, but to do my project, we had to rely on previous projects done in the McCowan lab. So canine lacrotin has been cloned and expressed in E. coli and purified and used to create an antibody to detect lacrotin in our samples and also an indirect ELISA so that we can see how much lacrotin is in our samples. And then this is um, a DNA gel of our uh, lacrotin and then a protein gel of our lacrotin. So for my project, I analyzed 46 canine tear samples from the Virginia Maryland College of Veterinary Medicine. Of those, 24 were normal dogs and 22 were dry eye dogs. And traditionally to diagnose dry eye, we use a Shermer tear test, which looks like this tiny little Shermer tear strip, like a little paper ruler, and that gets inserted in the lower lid of the canine's eye. And as it stays there for one minute, tears flow up the wick and you can measure tear production in millimeters per minute. So traditionally, 15 millimeters per minute or more indicates that a dog has normal tear production, where anything less than that indicates that a dog has dry eye. So um, this scheme is the um, way I analyze all the tears and I can go into each step as this presentation goes on. So tear collection and elution. Um, cotton wicks were topically applied to the ocular surface of the canine's eye and allowed to absorb tears. And these were packaged and sent to me at JMU to analyze. And to elute these tears from the wick, I used filter sterilized PBS, and, um, which is just a phosphate buffer, and centrifugation. <coughs> Next, I wanted to see how much total protein was in our tear samples, so I used a BCA assay. This assay is a color metric assay, so um, the color of our sample indicates how much total protein is in it. So samples like this that are lighter green indicate a low concentration of total protein, where samples that are a darker purple indicate a higher concentration of total protein. So we use a standard curve, and we generate the standard curve by using um, known concentrations from highest concentration to lowest total protein. And by doing that, we can find the absorbance of these and generate our standard curve, and then find the absorbance of our unknown samples, backtrack that, and find the concentration of total protein in our samples. Um, and then next, we wanted to see how much total lacrotin was in our samples. And so we used a similar style assay, which was an indirect ELISA, which is also a color metric assay, um, where dark yellow signifies a high total lacrotin concentration and a low, uh, a low concentration of lacrotin was indicated by a clear, like lighter yellow color. Again, we generated our standard co curve from our known concentrations of lacrotin, found the absorbance of our unknowns, backtrack, and found our lacrotin concentration in our samples. Next, we wanted to visualize monomeric lacrotin, and to do this, we used Western blotting and densitometry. Um, the way the Western works is it's a variation of the ELISA where we use SDS page to separate out our protein, we transfer that to a membrane, and then we challenge that membrane with antibodies and use a chemiluminescent reaction so that we can visualize solely lacrotin. Um, 
This is a, an example of what a Western blot looks like. Monomeric lacquer tin is about 18 kilodaltons, so this is where that is. We have N at the top where we have normal samples, and DE where we have dry eye samples. These are our molecular weights. This is our Schirmer tear test value, which shows um, tear production in our canines, and then our lacquer tin concentration as determined by the ELISA. So something really cool to note is that in our first four, we see a nice prominent lacquer tin band in our monomeric lacquer tin. And then in our dry canines, there's a really faint or almost absent band. So next we did densitometry to analyze the relative intensity of solely the monomeric lacquer tin band. And we just do that with a program in our um, lab. So what does that all mean? So if we just look at this graph, I've plotted our, Sh our Schirmer tear test values versus our total tear protein. And blue signifies the average dry eye total tear protein, and red signifies the average normal tear protein. And from this, we can tell that <coughs> dry eye canines have significantly more total tear protein in their tears than normal canines. And this actually really makes sense if you think about it, because when you have a dog with dry eye, their eyes are really inflammated, in, 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 uh, inflammated and um, inflamed and have a lot of immunity uh, proteins going to that eye, and so there's already more proteins there. Also, there's a smaller tear um, volume, which indicates a higher concentration of protein to tear volume. Um, and then if you look at this graph right here, I've plotted our Schirmer tear test values versus the relative intensity of monomeric lacquer tin. And so again, blue signifies our average monomeric lacquer tin relative intensity, and red signifies our average monomeric lacquer tin relative intensity for normal. This one's for dry eye, and this one's for normal. And from this, the key takeaway is that dry eye canines have significantly less relative intensity for <coughs> monomeric lacquer tin banding. Um, than when compared to normal. Therefore, um, as I previously stated, dry eye canines have significantly more total protein and significantly less monomeric lacquer tin. And therefore, um, the absence of lacquer tin really does have the potential to be um, a biomarker of dry eye. So in the future, actually this summer, we are going to be moving to human clinical trials and we are going to be looking at 200 patients and getting four samples from each patient. Patient, So we're going to be assaying about 1,200 samples this summer. And so hopefully in the future we can bring this to market as it has topical applications in both humans and canines. So I want to say thank you to my awesome mentor, Dr. McCallum, for helping me and growing me as a scientist and individual. Thank you to Dr. Stockwell for being an awesome reader. And Dr. Rob, he's on here. And then Dr. Disney for sending me all the tear samples and helping me out in the lab. And then all my lab mates and friends, like I couldn't thank you enough for all the support you gave me. So any questions? <laughs>
Um, could you just collapse your data down to the percentage of lacrotin per total protein? Yes, I think so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could take like I'm just from the for, ELISA. For a, for a biomarker, you, you probably just want to choose one thing. So if you're, you're measuring those two things, then you could say this is a threshold level, right? Mm -hmm. It's this percentage of protein out of total or something. Yeah, that's what we we actually graph it um, like nanograms of lactatin per nanograms of total protein. Okay, yeah, so you do that already. Mm -hmm. And um, for the ELISA, we actually had a hard time this time because some of the canines were actually on treatment, and so we thought that that might inflate SCT values. We started having dogs that were previously diagnosed as dry eye come in with SCT values higher than traditional 15 millimeters per minute or under, and so future studies should be conducted to really look at lactatin concentrations in canines not on treatment also. How much do you think it would cost for a lacrotin replacement therapy for a dog? I don't know. That's <laughs> what, I wonder if pe like people would pay for that for their animals. I know I would. Pay for chemo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my parents gave my dog chemo one time, so. <laughs> 50% of the pets in the United States get uh, Christmas presents, so. Mind you, and birthday presents. <laughs> Katie's dog, <laughs> not Katie's dog, Kenzie's dog gets uh, a cake. Yes. <laughs> and donuts every day. <laughs> is the deficiency state due to an autoimmune problem or is it because of genetics? The deficiency state? I don't know. I, that's a really great question. I really don't know. Do you know, Dr. McCann? That's actually a very good question. They're trying to figure that out. There are some genetic components to it. Uh, Sjogren's syndrome itself is an autoimmune disease uh, that attacks the lacrimal gland. So it has a secondary effect of dry eye, uh, probably because of the autoimmune effect. But there is a genetic component that people are trying to figure out right now. Okay.